Here we go. Got some action. Going to another jetpack call. Yeah. Guy must have fell out of the sky. He's here. <laughs> he ran out of fuel. <laughs> Cruising down the street in my six fall. Just like that, somebody turned off the rain and the sun come out. I'm your huckleberry. Uh -uh. Hey everybody, you don't know me, but I'm on TV, so you can trust me. Welcome to the This Is Tampa podcast with Rob and I'm Jen and today we are here with a very special guest, Mr. Kirby LaValle, uh, co-owner with his wife, Miss Christina LaValle of The Cake Girl. The Cake Girl. Yay! Yep. Well, Kirby, welcome back. This is our first episode in probably six months. <laughs> so thanks yeah. for helping us break the seal, I guess. We're back. <laughs> We're, back. <laughs> We're back. Oh my gosh. Oh. The How winter edition, been? right? How yeah. have you been, Rob? Uh, well, I've been warm until today, but today we're a little chilly <laughs> outside over here off Dale Mabry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been good. I've been, you know, trying to get back in the swing of things here and uh, looking forward to 2021 mm -hmm. uh, for business and everything and getting, getting the podcast back on a regular basis. Um, that's what I'm uh, looking at. Yeah. Yeah. You? Same. <laughs> Same. Just getting there. Ooh, yeah. Almost to 2021. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk to Kirby a little bit because I'm curious. You own this beautiful small business here in Carrollwood and you're very successful. So how has it been for you and Christina as far as business with COVID and just all the changes going on this year? Well, first off, thanks for having me. And yeah, um, thank you. It's 2020 has been an interesting year for a lot of people that don't know. We actually celebrated our first year in brick and mortar yeah. during Corona. Um, so it'll be a year that we'll never forget. Uh, June was our one year anniversary here at uh, our first brick and mortar store. We've been around for about 10 years between our festivals, markets, our food truck, um, and then all the little progressions along the way that we've made to get to the point of having our first store. So. Um, definitely a milestone and if it's something that we uh, we've learned a lot uh, our first year and we've learned how to really adapt overcome and um, just be fluid and flexible and just roll with it um, that's probably been our recipe to success to be honest with you is just be able to learn from what's going on in the world learn what our customers want and figure out how to deliver it to them yeah I think that's uh, uh, the big thing like what has separated a lot of businesses that have continued to be successful and, and, and grow their business or at least survive like in this atmosphere. And I know, I think you were on the call too, right? Were we all on a call yeah. like in the beginning, like April or whatever, um, that Maureen put on with all, the small, oh, yes, yes. with all the small businesses and everybody was looking for uh, different ideas on, you know, uh, how they can leverage their business or, or change it to meet the customer's needs, meet your own needs to put food on the table. And, um i think yours i mean you you're you got a social media pro profile like you are on point with that um and i think that helps a lot yeah it's it's definitely helps us to be able to communicate well with our customers and you know and what we do our product really is seeing is believing right, right. Uh, and tasting it of course oh, but yeah, for sure you know if really what we do it sells itself once they see what we can do mm -hmm. um, so yeah the social media has been huge especially if you just leverage it properly I mean even with what you guys do is just pushing out information and announcements and now especially we're in a virtual world yeah. I think that's social media I think has taken a turn I mean look at zoom I mean zoom was I didn't even know about zoom before <laughs> coronavirus yeah. yeah I think I used it like a couple times maybe but um you guys nail it like when you do see your like photos and stuff like i, I literally can taste it like i can imagine <laughs> tasting the cake and and it's it's you you're, you're test driving it virtually but it's it's there virtual it's, cake tastings oh uh, yeah <laughs> virtual cake tasting but well speaking of your social media so the cake girl it's at the cake girl on instagram uh, the Cake Girl LLC, yes. Okay, Cake Girl LLC, and then on Facebook. We're hoping too. to get the Cake Girl one day soon. Uh, Somebody else has it. It's been an account that's been active for, I think, 15 years, and they don't even use it. But 
We'll have to have a chat with some people about that. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Own it all. Well, I remember when this everything first started with COVID. You did something that was so awesome, which was those cute little cupcake kits. And I remember oh, I picked yeah. them up for my kids, and they just loved it. It was so good. Yeah. So that, did that you actually fun. ever close your doors? We closed for the two week uh, mandate, kind of when that first happened, where okay. local government said, "Hey, everybody's kind of shut down for two weeks." You know, no dining rooms. It, it was a very gray area of like who could operate, who couldn't operate. Um, so really, what we we did is we just used that two weeks to sit down and plan our new launches of our products and figure out how we could get back open, even if we couldn't essentially open the doors. You know, what could we do? Could we deliver? Could we ship? Could we, right. you know, stand out front in the parking lot? What whatever we could do, you know. And that take home kit was uh, how that come about. Like, we uh, we've been getting asked for a long time about you know doing decorating contests. Um, the, the do it yourself kit was just like a fun way to get people, especially when they were at home, right. to say, okay, this is something fun. Like Jen said, that you could do with yeah. your kids, you know. Yeah, um, that's a good idea. And it was like, and we made it a competition, so it got people more engaged right. and got them online, and they were posting social media uh, videos, and it really kind of caught. A that's pretty cool, um, the genius of traction. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the genius of it. That's why I say, like, you would think that you had a marketing background, like for real. Like, I've actually we... got that a lot in my life, and I think it's just because I've been in business for so long. I I started my first business when I was twelve years old, <laughs> oh, pushing 12? a lawnmower around my neighborhood and uh, curbside lawn service, and it's actually spelt like my name, K I R B S I D E. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> and uh, you know, I started just pushing my my dad's uh, llama around my neighborhood and before you knew it I had like 25 accounts I, I was in high school at the time I got a trailer I got commercial lawn equipment wow. and uh, just continued to grow it and linked up with some people and learned networking and uh, learned from some pretty cool older business guys along the way and just kind of really always had that entrepreneurial bug since that time yeah it's awesome. it's evident like because I, I watch what you do. You know who else is good is, is Joe from the Ice Dream Shop. Yeah. I, I literally go in there and because I seen something on Instagram, I say, I, I get it. I save it. I want that. I want that. <laughs> yeah. I literally, that's how I order. Because <laughs> I look at the board, I'm like, I just want that's this. That's sometimes the way it is, you know, when people, like you said, you can almost taste it through, especially now with how good cameras are. Yeah. You know, in technology and videos, like we posted a ramen noodle cake just the other day, I and we did that. something a little different. We we did a video kind of showing the dimensions of the cake and stuff, and oh. that video just went like crazy. Oh yeah. Um, so we're just trying new things and seeing what people like. Yeah. And you know, just figuring it out. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, you do a good job. You know, like, what's the other businesses you came? With? You had? I've been. I've I've had. I started with my lawn service, then when I went to college, my buddy and I that we went to high school with, we started a uh, four-wheel drive company. We did, uh, it's called Four Wheel Wholesale. And uh, what we did is we sold online truck accessories. So we got into kind of e-commerce back when that was. Oh, like first. eBay and stuff? Like... We started doing eBay. We started do. we had an e-commerce store. We sold locally here in Tampa, Orlando. Um, we got hooked up with some distributors, um, four wheel parts and a few others. Oh. Uh, national things so we started selling and it was fun taught me a lot about that I'm curious to know obviously you started dating Christina and you obviously found out she's an incredible baker <laughs> yeah I know she grew up baking um, He's so how like, did it business. go from like just this is delicious you should open a business <laughs> to where we are now so that's kind of funny um, we we met when we worked at Target oh. I was working in loss prevention she was a front-end manager and um, it's like loss prevention can't date the employees. It's like one of the golden rules of, oh. of that profession. And now I'm way past that. So <laughs> if Target's listening, Sorry, Target. they can't do anything to me at this point. But, um, you know, it was, uh, we started dating, or we, we actually just became really good friends. Uh, us and a core other group, you know, we were always would have lunch together and she would bring in sweets for the staff and, um, I was like, man, this, this girl's onto something, you know. She has a great personality, and she really knows how to bake. And then I started seeing some pictures of cakes she was doing, and I was like, 
you're in. Do you, yeah, I was like, do you do this I'm for in. like, do you do this for like a business? <laughs> so we were talking about Christina, um, her incredible talent and her hobbies. You know, her hobby really turned into a business. Um, and she started doing cakes and stuff um, on the side for people. And, and people just really loved her work. Um, so she ended up leaving Target. She went to work at a private bakery in Orlando and really learned from that lady and, and got some really good experience. Um, and then from there, it was pretty much like the progression, you know, Publix. And, you know, Publix is a different type of cakes than we do yeah. here. Um, but she got the experience, you know, more experience under her belt. And then when we got married, she moved to Tampa. We started doing markets and festivals. And I don't think it was even like three or four months later. We were getting a dessert truck. So we just couldn't bring enough products with us um, with a tent. And uh, we did the dessert truck for a couple years. And then it was just like the cake business just took off. And we couldn't even use the truck anymore. It was just like a good problem to have, you know. But yeah. so, and then we ended up here. We, so you were, you, you were dating the whole time, like from Target to her going to Orlando? Yeah, we dated then... for six years before we got married. We got married in 2013. Oh so how'd that work out? Because at one point you were a cop, right? Yep. Yeah, I worked uh, here at the sheriff's office in Tampa. Um, when I when I moved from Orlando, I went down south to Fort Myers for about a year and a half um, for the company that I was working with um, at the time. And then I ended up coming back up here in uh, 2009 to, to Tampa. So um, once once we moved here, I was we commuted back and forth a couple you know, for right. a few years That's fine. Um, while I was working and, and she was working and finishing her school and stuff. And So at any point were you guys like long distance? Yeah, dating? probably. Mo well, yeah, I left. Um, I left Orlando in 20. Uh, when was that? 2009. I oh, know 2008. 2008, 2009, and then pretty much from there all the way to 2013 was long distance. Aww. Oh, wow. Well, so I have to ask, did Christina make your wedding cake? <laughs> she did make her wedding cake, oh. of course. <laughs> she had to make yeah. her own wedding cake. I love well, it. Yeah, she was very particular about that. <laughs> okay, so tell us about the wedding money. cake now. <laughs> what flavor? She, what frosting? Uh, we had, what did we have? I think we had a couple different uh, mm -hmm. flavors, but I think we had the almond uh, cake, and then I think we also had... I don't know. She did, I think, a couple different things. I can't remember. I'm I don't sure even know knows. if I even ate any of the cake. I can't remember. I think I was so busy. I think I was so busy talking to everybody. You know what I mean? And just enjoying yourself. You don't mm -hmm. even yeah. remember really what. That's so cute. What kind of cake cut, it was? I remember it? cutting it, but I don't remember oh. uh, like actually eating it. Oh I know it was gosh. good though. I didn't have you any complaints. Good. Well, hey, <laughs> obviously it's true that the the shortest distance to a man's heart is through his belly and uh yeah, and what's you like funny, make goods <laughs> yeah what's funny is i'm actually not even really a big sweets person oh really so yeah i don't even eat a lot of sweets i'm not really big into that so for me you know i, I like them every now and then but i'm not that into them you know oh wow that's funny. Well, yeah, yeah by now you'd crazy. be like 300 pounds if yeah. you were. <laughs> so what's what's the future for the cake girl? You're very involved in Tampa Bay and very involved in charities and giving back. What Do you have any plans you can fill us in on as far as what's coming up for y'all? So 2020 was supposed to be store number two uh, coming on board, which was a couple years before our plan. Uh, but now store number two is going to get pushed back a little bit into the beginning of 2021. So that one right now is actively being built in Wesley Chapel in the Grove. Oh, very exciting. In the new, uh, yeah. the new container, container park. It's called Crate. Oh. With a K. K-R-A-T-E. Like and, Kirby. Uh, with a K. <laughs> like, so that's going to be... It's going to be pretty cool. That is it's cool. It's all going to be made out of shipping containers. Um, so they're cutting up the shipping containers, welding them all together. Wow. So are, are you going to have... Um, a seating area there like I know some of them have outside seating so, yeah there's gonna be a lot of outdoor it's gonna be a very fluid outdoor kind of entertainment district this is what uh, Mark Gold is really going for in this project um, I think there's gonna be some limited seating I'm not really sure yet we haven't really finalized all of the plans as far as our drawings and stuff but I think it's gonna be uh, 
It's definitely going to be spectacular. It's going to be cool. That's yeah. just so exciting. Yeah. Oh, my god. There's a lot of there's a lot of people going in there. Well, Joe, like I just said, from Ice Dream Shop, he's he's going in there. But he's oh. going to have he's not going to be a container. He's going to be in the regular um, yeah, they've and, and that's the cool thing about what they've done is they've redeveloped the whole thing. You know, what used to be desolate buildings is now being revamped. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. bringing in now. I even saw the sign co-working space. Wow! Yep. Oh my god! I yeah. mean, it's going to be like I think they're going to really try to make it a hub, and I think I mean co-working space is is perfect now more than ever when people are getting rid of these big buildings and going to. Well, they were hit too. Is you know, yeah, this whole but I think that's going to be a perfect area because people are already going to be there, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. I think the commercial real estate is definitely going to be changing after all this going mm -hmm. on right now. So I think Mark Gold was ahead of his time with the Grove and the shipping containers because <laughs> yeah. it's got to be a little bit less of a, uh, a monthly budget for that well, and all the, yeah. building, I would hope, but, but um, well, it's a it great is. destination. Well, Wesley Chapel well. is an expensive area. Yes. I mean, my rent there is going to be higher in a oh. smaller footprint than here, okay. but well, it's a different demographic and it's mm. a different, what, Wesley Chapel is just the place to be right now, you know, just like years ago, you know, Carrollwood was the place to be, but carrollwood has been here and it's an existing community and we love it here. It's great to us, but you know, just like some communities, South Tampa, Gandy, mm -hmm. West Shore, all those are being redeveloped and with yeah. with uh, that comes higher fees, you know, and, and more buzz and everything else. Right. It's kind of cyclical, you know, yeah. uh, what's old is new again, what's, <laughs> you know, yeah. what's, right. what was new once is now old. This will get built back up at, at some point. Well, I know. think Carrollwood I mean, is just does. a very, like, classical area. Yeah. Very established. Classic. Wesley Chapel is where all the excitement is, it seems, right now. So. All the new, It's all moving new. north. There's, yeah. I mean, there's no land here. I mean, look in Carrollwood. I mean, look around. There's nothing else that you could build on unless you ripped buildings down and rebuilt them. Mm -hmm. um, that's and, and that's what will happen eventually, right? You know? Everybody's just going to keep. I mean, that's that's all they really can do if they want to keep redeveloping is mm -hmm. taking existing buildings and ripping them down. And I mean, I think you saw that near the stadium is now even a lot of those old buildings are coming down and new shops are going in. Yeah. I mean, just like that old, what was it, uh, Sam Seltzer's or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, or Seltzer Steakhouse yeah. that used to be right Seltzer's. there. Yeah. Uh, near... Um, the dealerships Yeah, near the dealerships. That mm -hmm. whole thing got knocked down and now it's going to be like 10 or 15. It's a strip center. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's taken a little while, but it's it's going to be probably open here yeah. beginning yeah. of next year. So, so that's 10 new businesses that are going to come to that area. Mm -hmm. right. and I mean, the Drew Park area is not hasn't been you know much of a gem for no, anything outside of car dealerships location. but now mm -hmm. i mean that car that dealership. area is available and probably relatively cheap mm -hmm. is the green iguana still down there green iguana is I, i'm not sure i think they are i think they might really? be i think i drove by the other day unless i'm imagining things <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully not while you're driving <laughs> it used to be there <laughs> it was it was i imagined it Speaking of the stadium, we have the Super Bowl coming yeah. in a couple months. Do y'all have any plans yet for Super oh, Bowl? Oh, I'm not cupcake? going. But <laughs> we'll be no. there, actually. We're an approved what? vendor. Oh, exciting. Uh, we were selected as an approved vendor, uh, went through the process, and we, we're going to be taking part in their tailgate party. So nice. waiting on the final details for that. Um, so are you hiring? Or more business to come. Like for that? <laughs> you need uh, to Security it, or something like you know, you never know. I might need security. Um, I, I can, but you know, provide it's security. It's gonna be Rob fun. Just wants to eat the cupcakes. <laughs> yeah, and watch the Super Bowl. Eat cupcakes, drink beer, and watch Super Bowl. Yeah, we're actually we're Next we're day. gonna be doing our new our newer product that we launched during COVID uh, for the Super Bowl, which is our Craven Cups, which is the cake that's in a jar. Ooh. So we're gonna be doing those. They really like that product, and um, that was the one that they chose. So we're gonna be doing the. Um, our Spanish style cake, which is called the Puerto Rican cake. Ooh. Um, they wanted something that was like kind of a Tampa, yes. you know, what is Tampa known for? Mm -hmm. A lot of Hispanic population, um, old school, you know, uh, Spaniards. Make some um, cigar ones, like cigar. Yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of local, things. you know, Ybor City stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they, they really, the Super Bowl really wanted to do something yeah. with I can local, see that. cool kind of flavor. Local flavor, yeah. yeah. They do that all the time, like when they're, you know, in Philadelphia, it's all about the 
cheesesteak, you know, and New York, they go to the pizza place, all about yeah, pizza. Yeah, that's what I thought was cool, because, you know, when they approached us, it was like, we want to do something like, what is Tampa locally? What's what's the makeup of the community, you know? Yeah. And what what is something unique that we can't get when we go to, like, L.A. or New York or, you know, Philly right. or, you know, these other places is, like, what's so different, you right. know? Because they want their, the people that are coming to experience a little bit of the local community. Right. Yeah, I think that's, that's a huge. great idea. Uh, Showcase Tampa huge. Bay and all the cool things yeah. you have to offer here. So, well, that's really cool, Kirby. I'm very excited to see what the future holds for y'all. And Christina's talent is insane. Those cakes are beautiful. If you haven't checked out the cake girl, go look at those pictures and stop in because it's delicious thank you very very i'm like the ramen noodle cake i was blown away by that i don't know how she came up with that <laughs> people asked if it was actually ramen noodles it looked everything but I'm like, it was, the cake was it like this like ramen it was yeah it looks just like ramen noodles oh my god I she can do it, it all it's insane her talent is just amazing yeah so. i see some of the things that she's making and i'm like wow Oh how, like how to yeah they blow me away the, I... the, 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 what is that cake competition like on, on food network they have a cake a, wars or something. cake wars yeah. yeah you should go on with cake wars it's funny she's in her she's uh, interviewed for a couple they haven't panned out yet but i think 2021's her year yeah, yeah. you'll Ooh. get there i don't know let's see what happens see what happens <laughs> we'll keep an open mind yeah <laughs> maybe there's some talking already that's exciting in the background. oh my gosh well thank you kirby for letting us showcase your business yeah thank you for maybe having we me we can get some pictures and share those on our P facebook page as well and instagram yeah. so you can all see what's going on inside the cake girl and actually see the cupcakes and such so i'll have yeah. to do some of that in a little bit too it's gonna be interesting like you know what you should do because everybody likes cake and ice cream together, right? You should hook up with Joe and, and give each other, like, whatever. Have some kind of thing where you're between you both. Get your cake and your ice cream, too. <laughs> there you go. Get your cake, get your ice cream. Right yeah. oh, Instead of competing, love that. <laughs> collaborate. I'll Collaboration is yeah. key. Yeah, you get a cupcake and a scoop for however many dollars. But you gotta go two different places to get it. <laughs> Rob's gonna be an investor. Huh? You'll burn the calories <laughs> off as you walk. Yeah. <laughs> well, so typically, Kirby, at the end of our small business features, we do a lightning round. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have something prepared, Rob. If not, shoot oh, lightning, some, uh, or would you rather lightning round or would you rather? Yeah, it's what do you same think? thing. Like yeah. you could do same thing. Okay. Yeah, Kirby. By the way, I don't think we mentioned it. You're you're born been raised in Tampa right yes so you've been on this earth 33 years and almost all of it with the exception of Orlando and yeah. Fort Myers for a little while was in Tampa yep so you know a lot about Tampa so a couple things a couple things <laughs> do yeah do your regular uh all right. all irregular right. so like especially like the sports thing. You, and you just gotta come up with your answer like no thinking okay okay <laughs> yeah. all right so since we're at the cake girl I know you're not a big sweet guy but Chocolate or vanilla? I say vanilla. Vanilla, good choice, good choice. Um, <laughs> all right, now we're going back to Tampa Bay. Bucks, lightning, or rays? Lightning. Lightning, okay. Oh, hockey. Got our, That's uh, a surprising one. Our champs here. I love hockey. You do? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Hillsboro, Pasco, or Pinellas? To live or to? Both. I'm from Hillsboro, I've lived in Pasco. I like Hillsboro better. Uh-huh. Okay. Never lived in Panola, so I can't really hate on them. Yeah. They've got good beaches over there. Speaking of <laughs> I beaches. Heard. Favorite beach in Tampa Bay? Greater Tampa Bay? Probably Clearwater. That's a good one. Uh, Clearwater or St. Pete? Pretty close. Yeah. Would you say St. Pete or Tampa? For beaches or for... For in general? Uh, I'd say Tampa. Okay. Favorite restaurant in Tampa Bay? I don't know. We eat out a lot. We're we're like sushi lovers, like Italian. I don't know. That's gonna be a really hard one to, okay. to for me because I, I like all foods. Yeah. Okay. And it's hard for me to choose one fa well, like if, favorite. Like that's always the thing is like, what's your favorite restaurant? No, like don't. just like you asked me, what's my favorite food? I don't really just have one favorite. I like just a lot of things. <laughs> what's your what 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 what's your favorite uh, steak place? Favorite steak place? We we've been going to Shula's for years. Um, Shula's, that's a first. I, I like yeah. uh, 
and Don Shula is like a legend in the football industry, right? So, but like the USDA prime steaks, like you really can't beat them. Um, okay. I don't know. I also like going to Salt Rock Grill if you've ever been there in Indian Rocks Beach. They have good steaks and seafood. But you know, everybody always says like Charlie's and Ruth Chris. And, yeah, that's what you usually yeah. get. I you know, think the you're standard. The first one to say Shula. So I know. I didn't know there's Shula's here. And you here. know what? Yeah. I agree with you. Shula's. <laughs> you know, Shula's, Shula's is delicious, and you know, not only that, but the service is excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, they actually take the time to like. You're not just a number there. Okay. You know. They, yeah. they actually, it's like a team too. They all work together. At, and, and that's just the way that he founded that company. I mean, being a sports guy, it's like a team, high quality, high energy. I don't know. That's probably my favorite steak place. Yeah. Okay. Well, would you rather have a steak or a sushi? Steak. Uh, my man. Okay. He's still a red-blooded American. <laughs> <laughs> I love steak. You can keep your man card. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I really like a lot of steak. We eat a lot of steak, too. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Cool. All right. Uh, last one for me. Favorite podcast in Tampa Bay? This one, of course. Hey, oh, good answer. I mean, Tampa geez, podcast. whenever I listen to podcasts, this is the only one. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is the only podcast the you know about. <laughs> this must be the only one oh, he knows about. Oh, gosh. Oh, my. Well, thank you, Kirby, for answering all of our crazy questions. You're welcome. Uh, Rob, so, gosh, it's been a while. We're, yeah. we're a little uh, rocky here, but... Up. um. Let's get to our non-Florida man story. I know you found a good one yeah, yesterday, um, so I'm going to let you talk about it, but I love the way you titled it. You <laughs> called it Rocket Man, and I yeah, just this one's, thought that was hilarious. <laughs> this one's Rocket Man. So the non-Florida, do you know You know the idea of the non-Florida man story? Mm-hmm. You know, all the time they're like, Florida man, Florida man, so everybody's state. So I find a story of a crazy person from another place that's not Florida. And that's what, you know, that's what this is about. So we, and we want to, we don't tell you about it beforehand because we want your like authentic uh, reaction to it or, and your thoughts on it. So that's, <laughs> that's why, uh, so the headline is person flying with jetpack spotted near Los Angeles International Airport again. <laughs> that's mind blowing. <laughs> so says a person was spotted soaring high above Southern California using a jetpack. Again, for a second time. For a second time in six weeks, an unidentified person was seen flying using a jetpack near Los Angeles International Airport. It's unclear whether this is the same individual. Like, how many people out there have freaking jetpacks? That it would be somebody else. Uh-oh. Here we go. Got some action. Going to another jetpack call. Yeah. Guy must have fell out of the sky. He's here. He ran out of fuel. (laughs) At the time, the jetpack was flying 6,000 feet in the air. 6,000. It was a Chinese, a China Airlines crew members that reported the sighting. Imagine what they must have been thinking. Yeah, what the like, heck is what? that guy doing? <laughs> <It's> Iron, <laughs> Iron Man. So yeah, the FAA, FAA had alerted the local law enforcement, and uh, they're working with the FBI and looking into trying to find this person that's uh, flying unauthorized near an airport. Like you can't fly within like seven miles or whatever it is uh, near an airport. Um, so they didn't even find the guy. Yeah, yeah. So the, <laughs> this is what they say. Here's the quote. We just passed a guy in a jetpack from the pilot to air traffic control. And <laughs> the controller went on to inform another pilot and couldn't help communicating the strangest of the situation and saying, only in L.A. <laughs> hey, you know what? At least it's not Florida. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. I mean, it'd be pretty cool, actually, if it was. But, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it, it wouldn't be bad having a jet. But maybe he'll come for the Super Bowl. Maybe he'll try and, oh, like, sneak in. You know yeah, you know how they used to have those guys that would parachute in? Well, McDill here, though, I don't know how long they'll, <laughs> yeah. they'll last up there in the air. But <laughs> the no, blast them. <laughs> Our friends down there, they're always flying over. So <laughs> exactly. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> that's not the place I would practice my jet pack. Probably not yeah. anywhere near here, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank God for our our military at McDill keeping us safe. Right? It would be like having <laughs> F-18 on his ass. Oh, my God. I don't even know where do you buy a jet pack and, like, how where do you, do you buy- learn how to use <laughs> I that? I don't know. 
But let me check if it's on Amazon. That'll be on your, that'll Maybe be on your on next Amazon. podcast. Yeah. Where to get <laughs> one and how to use it. <laughs> Rob can test it Jetpack. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe bring a jetpack like, expert on your show. 6,000 feet in the air. That's, that's, uh, that's high. I mean, that's a lot. I, I thought maybe he was, you know, when I first started to read the story, I'm like, maybe it was a, you know, a couple hundred, 6,000 feet. Yeah, that's He's like pretty, up in the clouds. That's pretty high. Oh, my Lord. I can only imagine <laughs> seeing that from a plane. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Sitting out in the plane and you look out the window? Oh, my Here, what's that guy doing over there? <laughs> Terrifying. I can oh. just imagine the pilots. Oh my, what is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at Flame Man. Oh my god, man. Oh man. Well, one last uh, Florida Man story. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. Yeah, oh that was gosh. back in like October. It was a little, it was a little while ago, but mm-hmm. you know, we hadn't done a podcast, so. Yeah. You, you, and you're probably hearing it here first. Uh oh. Oh, we're still good. You're probably hearing it here first because I didn't know it until I went looking for it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't even know what to do from there. <laughs> I mean, it's been a while since we've done a podcast episode with yeah. COVID and everything going on. It really kind of pumped the brakes on a lot of going out. And at least now here we can sit outside and enjoy the brisk, cold yeah. weather. Here at the the brisk, and and enjoy it. Heard me for letting, for, you know, letting us be, uh, break our seal back with, with you here in Carrollwood. So. Yeah, we were excited to get you on because uh, I think you were always in the plan for 2021 you know we had a a plan for the whole year pretty much laid out and uh doing you know doing these every week uh but like she said you know i I went to a podcast uh convention in orlando back in beginning of march and i I was all pumped up i came back from that i'm like man i met all these podcasters from all over the world and they had me all fired up and then they're like we're shutting everything down I'm like covid i'm like are you kidding me and i and that just put the brakes on everything but you were definitely on the top of the list and so we're glad we got to get here yeah. and, and do it today yeah well we're glad to see things are starting to get back to, to normal somewhat here in tampa bay <laughs> we're glad to see the big small businesses are still thriving I know it's been tough for all of them, so God bless all of our small business owners because it's been a rough couple months. Um, but most everyone's been doing pretty well, I think, for the situation. Considering, yeah. 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 <laughs> Considering the Considering. situation, the real estate market has been absolutely on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know Rob and I have been very busy yeah. with that. Um, and home builders are just building like crazy right now. So it's been a very interesting year, 2020. But um, I'm wondering, Rob, what are your goals for 2021? Do you have any hopes or ambitions? Well, my or? main goal is <laughs> to to remain not getting sick. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's my <laughs> top number one. Like, don't get sick. Um, but no, I mean, I have a lot of business uh, ambitions and uh, things that I want to accomplish this year. Um, you know, obviously, I want to double my real estate business and keep that growing. But I also you know, I got some other things in in mind mm-hmm. uh, that I want to get accomplished before the end of the year. Exciting. Yeah. See you. what Rob has in store. <laughs> Same. Just staying busy. Uh, I've got the kids at school, and that's a whole other thing. But I'm uh, just trucking along, working on some house renovation projects. So Ooh, house renovation. Yeah. Is that why you're selling everything? Yeah. Or giving it away. <laughs> if like, anyone needs a wagon, <laughs> a table. I saw that. Uh, bar stools. I've got a lot for for free, for free. Please take it out of my house. So, yeah. um, what about you, Kirby and Christina? I mean, I mean, I don't really have much time to be at my house to do renovations. Um, <laughs> I know. I mean, we're guy. hearing I hammers. We're hearing hammers in the background. Other people are doing renovations <laughs> very close to us here. Yeah. Um, so what you said is absolutely true. Um, I think that you know we've been working more during the pandemic than I mean I, I was working a lot before but I, I feel like now I'm like the days fly by even faster mm. um, but every time I have to go to Home Depot for something uh, or Lowe's I'll give them both credit or Ace Hardware um, <laughs> you know they're they're slant yeah. you know yeah. and, and you talk to the guys there and they're like oh we're not at a shortage or we're out of all these things we're we're busier than ever, and it's like, wow, well, that's great. Um, so people are still out, like you said, they're doing renovations. I have some that I need to get done at some point yeah. when I can have a couple of days off. Um, I don't think you're gonna have any of 
I got septic, a guy that... Septic tank is the next thing on my list. So. Oh, goodness. Because well, we, live, we live in Lutz, so we're on septic and well. Mm -hmm. So that was my first house that we've had this, and we, we renovated the house when we bought it a couple years ago. So yeah, we have a ranch house uh, on two and a half acres. So wow. we're learning um, the country life a little bit, right? Um, I've always been like a city boy, city water, <laughs> city sewer. Um, so yeah, this is a new thing. Like getting your country. septic tank pumped out, your drain field's not working. Yeah, those you know. are different set of problems. Yeah, new problems to have, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. just adulting at its best. So. But it's good, you learn a lot. Uh-huh. So true. I'm, I'm serious. My buddy would probably do it for for cake, you know, like in exchange <laughs> for go. cake as payment. Yeah. He does ca he does septic tanks. I don't know <laughs> if he does septic. What do you need done to it? Pumped it? He don't pump it. I mean, you gotta call the honey wagon for that. Yeah, I already called the honey <laughs> wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> yeah, the oh honey my wagon. Gosh. Well, 2021 looks great for Tampa. Like I said earlier, we've got the Super Bowl coming. Um, all sorts of new. Uh, small businesses with the Grove and Sparkman Wharf, all the new businesses going and hotels going down there and Water Street. Um, so it'll be an exciting year, and um, we're glad to get the podcast back rolling. Yeah, we'll we're happy, more happy to be back before 2021 hits. So thank you all for tuning in and for staying loyal to us. And anything yes. else you want to say before we? Oh, I'm I'm good. I'm cold. I'm <laughs> I'm like it's starting to warm up a little. I mean, we could sit here all day and do this if it was a little warmer, but. No, I got, uh, <laughs> got stuff to do. This is the closest you're going to get to the winter weather right here. That's one day, yeah, we got one day of winter. Here we go. One day of winter, yeah. probably Christmas will be nice and hot again. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. outside. Or rainy. Let's out. see. Hashtag Florida. So. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag Florida. Well, well hopefully uh, the, the 2021 is the year she gets on the, the Cake Wars. I'll be watching. Keep, <laughs> keep track. Cake Wars, by the way, I know you're watching. Not really, but <laughs> if you are, I mean, they might be. Put them on. Know. We'll tag yeah. them. <laughs> tag, we'll tag them. them. We're gonna tag you. Oh well, thanks, Kirby. Yes, thanks, thank Christina. you guys. Thanks, Rob. Thank you all for watching and for listening. And uh, check out the Cake Girl on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll see you guys later. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>